to Sam 44 man seen in over 100 plus countries around the world. You're tuned in to the Detroit Raw Show right here, only on YouTube. Mr. Sam 44 man, why you sharp as a tech? Were you coming from a funeral? Or a court hearing or something? Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Let me inform you beautiful people of mine that is thinking on a very low level that mainstream America wants you to present me as. I just came from the mosque. My brother, brother Marlon 2X, asked me to come back home. I haven't been home in a while, world. It doesn't mean that I haven't been practicing what I've been taught in the previous years as me being a young eight-year-old. But you all know that I have put it within my show as a grown man, a grown black man is that. So I've done well for myself. So my brother happened to see me speaking at the Dexter Elmhurst meeting, which was my last show. And uh, he said, brother, can you come home? We need you. Now he wasn't able to attend this after, uh, well this morning because due to the fact that the man has to make a living, he had to work. But it was all good because I stuck to my agreement. I showed up. And when I showed up, world, it was a, uh, it was like, I had missed my family. The teachings and the preachings of everything that was said today from a minister that is like the right hand man to Minister Louis Farrakhan. 10, 10, 15 is going down, world. The Islamic brothers will stand. Because that is the anniversary of the Million Man March. I didn't get a chance to attend the first Million Man March due to the fact that my uh, finances at that time enabled me, did not enable me to go. So I will be going this year. And uh, I'm gonna take a couple of brothers with me. And I want them to see this historical moment. We need this to happen in our community world because we have no more leaders. You best to believe soon, your man, Mr. Sam 44 Man, gonna be having an interview and showing you Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I hope that I can make that happen way before 10, 10, 15. Cause everybody has my business card. And let me introduce or should I say, welcome to the Detroit Raw Show to my new sisters and brothers. Assalamu alaikum. I, um, this is a show in which I do uplift our brothers and sisters, but I've done it in a unique way that has made me as popular as I am. That's the only thing I can say. I'm not ashamed about anything that I've ever done on this show. Sometimes you have to do things in order to show the world that you're serious. I mean, I was laughed at. I've been disrespected by mainstream America, which I call white people. Um, mainstream America, you know, they call me niggas, they call me sambos, they call me just everything under the sun. But that's cool, I'm, I'm used to that. But it's just the fact that world, just out here trying to make a difference. All I want to do is see our black brothers and sisters come up in this world. You know, something he said 
the minister that spoke today. What he said made a lot of sense. He said, we only have one enemy. And that one enemy is mainstream America. Now by mainstream America, that doesn't mean every white person in the world is bad. Let me get that understood to you, the world now. Cause I don't wanna, oh he's so racist. I don't wanna hear that. I don't wanna hear it. I'm projecting it in a way that we have family members that are white in some way or another. I told you my great great grandfather is white. Do I look white? But we have bad black people that are in white people's blood. But they don't want to have any ties with black people. See, like I told you, this new world that we have now is consists of mainstream America, the newly found gay, lesbian, and transsexuals, the Hispanic, and the Mexican, and then here we are black folks at the bottom of the total pole. Talking about second class citizens? Shit, we didn't drop down to fourth class citizens. I mean, just to keep it real, what have we done? What have we done? What have we done? It reinforced the way I felt. I felt so good. It, it, it's like, you ever been away from home for a long time, such a long time, for like decades, and then when you get there and you embrace and you see your brothers and sisters, and, 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 and they're trying to get it together, and they're looking at you like, you got it together. You've been out there in the wilderness. You've been beating yourself on the ground. You've come back home now. Show us what we need to do to show us we going to stand up for justice or no peace. I say once again, I have come home to my family of Islam. And when my brother asks me to come home, I must abide by it. It's the law. Now some of you might say, well, wait a minute, Mr. Sand 40 fucking man. Um, aren't you brothers fighting each other? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. That was a great observation, mainstream America. But let me introduce something to you like this. When the Indians were here, who took over this land? And when those individuals took over this land from the Indians, which was the Native Americans, let's not get them twisted, y'all, because they don't get enough credits. Y'all say, oh, but they got reservations. Man, please. Some of their reservations is probably worse than these ghettos here. But let's get back to the real facts. These reservations. Now I'm gonna name three different races of people, no, four different races, but I'm gonna all put it together so you'll understand where I'm coming from. Here we go. You have the Native Americans, which were the first ones on this land. And then you had the Europeans that came over. Just little, little. And took over this great land. More and more of their people came over and just took it over. Now mind the Indians being the Native Americans, they welcomed. Some of them even betrayed their own native people to do this. Okay, sound familiar a little bit? Just as in Africa, we had millions, millions 
to fight the mainstream American oppressors that were coming to present themselves to us. But then again, we had some of them sold us out. So now we're sold out, being sold around the world. And now, mainstream America is strong. America is no stronger than black people. And I'm gonna tell you why, because if it wasn't for the Indians, if it wasn't for black people, and if it even wasn't for the, the Hispanic and Mexican population, America would be no America like its greatness now. So therefore, we need to say, shouldn't all these races get together for a good common one man cause? Because we're all family. We all have the same bloodline. Whether you're in South America or in the Midwest here where I am, we're all family. But our family is broken up where our enemy is the one that's bringing our family against each other. Our enemy is breaking up our family, our homes, our relationships, everything. World, I fought hard to get to where I am in this life. And I'll be damned if I'm gonna give it up for anybody. I don't work for nobody. I don't owe nobody nothing. And I do what I wanna do. As a black man, man, I have the most beautiful life in the world. But yet and still, I deal with racism. Doesn't matter if I make over $100,000 a year doesn't matter if I live downtown or drive a Benz. It doesn't matter. I'm still a black man. But you know one thing about this black man? Come here. Come a little closer. A little bit closer. Little bit closer. I am dangerous. Black, I'm handsome, I have my wits, I have been homeless, I have been in the penitentiary, I have raised children that weren't even mine, I am an iconic hero in the black community. I love to drive down the street in my vehicle and have people blow at me and wave at me. I love getting out of my vehicle and having people say, Sandman, hey, how you doing? I might not know who you are from Adam and Joe, but you know what? You know me, and that's what I love. Thank you, world. From your man, Mr. Sand44 Man, because I always let you know, you're very important to me. You're very important to me. I watch my subscriptions come up, and every time my subscription, I get a new subscriber, it puts a smile on my face, because that's somebody that wanna hear what I got to say. I'm not gonna steer you wrong, I'm not no hater. What I'm hating, what am I hating? I got money and everything I need in life. What am I gonna hate on you for? I'm trying to help you, not hate on you. I wanna help you. So, I want to break bread with all my brothers and sisters out there. The lost and found. The ones that want to be found. The ones that's so lost they can't be found. I mean everybody. Because y'all, we need some help and I hear you. Y'all know I have over 1,300 shows on YouTube. You know I've been hearing you. But now I'm tied into to my family again. I'm, I'm, I'm back at home again. You know, I'm a busy man. I can't say that I'm gonna jump in and, oh, I'm gonna be at home every Sunday now because I just came back to the house. No, 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 no. I've been out here and I must stay out here. Family, my family, Islamic family. Because this is all I know. I have been in these streets for the age of 13. I have been homeless for four years and went to prison for five for sticking my manager, a mainstream American man, in a meat freezer with no clothes, no figure. 
But that's when I was young. That's when I was a kid. But see, America, you know, America needs to get up off that shit. Because I did that when I was a teenage kid. I'm 49 going on 50 years old, world. How is it that I can't be forgiven for what I've done? But Martha Stewart can. Any other mainstream American can. Martha Stewart knew she was lying from the front. She knew she was lying from the front. But, throw her in a clean for a few months. Let her do a couple of cooking things up in the penitentiary. All right, now she's out. Put her on the tether. Now she's got her show again. Y'all won't even let me get a firearm to protect my family. You'll give me a weed card first. Dig that. Keep them high. Hey. You know, world, just by me going back home doesn't mean that I'm a total uh, fanatic of Islam. It's not about being a fanatic. That's my family. They are my family. If it wasn't for Islam, I would never, ever been able to make these shows. Ever. They taught me how to be a man. How to stand up and be afraid of no man other than Almighty God Allah. Mainstream America don't frighten me. I frighten you. Because I'm your worst nightmare. See, I'm not that not, 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 the ones that you're putting on your, your local news and your national news to show the disparity and show how fucked up we are. You know? And then you make your kids look so golden and oh look at Miss Janie and look at this smart child here and, and you, you 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 uplift your children but you downgrade ours. Well guess what? Just so you know, to the oppressor out there, and to all you mainstream Americans, that's just like Ben Affleck, that had slaves in your background to get you to the point in life that you are right now. Well, let me tell you, there's a new nigga in town, and not so much new from Detroit but new to you around the world. And my name is Sanford Miles, AKA Mr. Sam 44 Man, so that you don't get it twisted. I'm about to have more brothers looking like me than you ever met. I'm about to showcase the Islamic family that I have had since I was eight years old. I've been telling you many years how you look at my religion as if we are terrorists. Well, I tell you like this. If you've been sleep every morning, wake up, walk out your front door, and there's somebody standing right at the side. Bang! Every morning. Bang! Every morning. Bang! Every morning. Now let me ask you a question. You go through this about 30, 40 years of your life. Every morning. Let me ask you a question. Is there a chance that that motherfucker that's socking you every morning for the past 30, 40 years gonna catch you on the day that you ain't going for it? Well, guess what, world? Today is that day for your man. It's been that day for a long time. For a long time. I just didn't know my brothers and sisters really needed me like this. Uh, they may have to, you know, understand that I have the worldly 
lifestyles, trends, things of that nature. Not so much trends, but it's embedded me. The worldly lifestyle is embedded in me. That's the way I should have put it. The worldly lifestyle has been embedded in me because I've only, I've, I've been in these streets since the age of 13. I'm 49. It's a long time. I've been homeless four years. I've been in prison five. You know, it took me a long time to kind of get my shit together is what I'm saying. But I have it together right now. I'm the man. <laughs> yes, sir. All praises due to Allah. Yes, I am the man. The man that mainstream America don't want to see. Let's, let, let's be real. Could you imagine two, one to two million men going to the Million Man March looking like this? Sharper than anything, ready to take on Main Street America to let you know where we coming from? How do you think America will react? And I'm gonna do you even one better, world. Why can't we as black people organize and shut this country down for a whole month? See, with mainstream America, I've learned of the years of me being out here in these streets and working here and learning this and learning that about mainstream America. I might have to walk through the back door, but best you believe your last dollar, I'm coming out the front door. That's what y'all hate about me. Y'all see the words, the comments that people see me send me? That's why y'all hate me. In addition to, you know, looking good and being intelligent and the whole city of people love me. You know how it is. Self-made millionaires, they call. It's a beautiful thing. Trust me. It's a very beautiful thing. But, uh, that's what I want to see. Y'all stay tuned. Because, uh, your man, Mr. Sam 44, man, I'm not a joke. But you want to play me? Well, hey. Let's play. Let the games begin. Come on now. All of my Mexicans, stop that beef shit. You're letting mainstream America impose that. They want that. Hug your brother, see your brother, represent your brother. Get out that mentality that we hate them. Why do you hate us? We family. We're family. The Indians, the brothers, the sisters. Let's embrace them. Stop acting ignorant. Stop putting all this shit on YouTube and Facebook that doesn't mean anything to help our race. If you don't have nothing to say, don't say nothing at all. Check these mainstream Americans. See that? I shouldn't say they mainstream Americans, but just American brothers, period, Americans. Stop labeling us. Stop, stop making us feel as though we're the underdog in some way. What have we done? What, what have we done? Didn't we provide y'all nannies, nanas? Didn't we provide the queen of wheat, man? Didn't we give y'all Aunt your mama? Come on, world. What else you want? Y'all took y'all white faces and turned them black for amusement and entertainment. You've disrespected our whole race of people continuously in your media. Now I wonder, if I turned around and painted my face white, like my man Snoop, shouts out to you Snoop, I know you watching baby. But if I did what Snoop did, would, would y'all be mad? 
Would I be racist? Oh my God, I could play that role real good. Real, real good. But would you be mad? Would I be a racist? After all these stars that y'all had playing blackface. See, I'm just only keeping it real and raw because that's what I do. If you don't like it, keep it moving. Because I don't care. When you're dealing with me, you're either going to get some knowledge or you're going to get left out in the cold. If you want to look like me, do what I do. I advise you to advise yourself to uh, listen to that brother. I don't care what he do. I don't care what you think about him. I like him. He good. <laughs> I appreciate that world. I do. I really do. This uh, feels good to me. Welcome back home. I've been home. Uh, I've been away from home for a long time. The nation is mine. But yet and still in my heart and in everything I've done in this show, it has included that. Even to admit and acknowledge the fact that I am Islamic. I am Muslim. So, uh, I'm a bad boy Muslim. That don't mean I'm not a good guy Muslim, but sometimes I'm a bad boy. That's what y'all like about me anyway. You know, I do things that people don't do. I do things that people want to do. But I'm going to tell you, if you want to roll with me, help me out. If y'all help me out, I got you. And oh, don't think I forgot about the scavenger hunt that I have going on around the world. Now, I might get a call from Chicago. If I get that call from Chicago, that means Minister Louis Farrakhan is telling me to go out to Chicago. But I might not be going to Chicago. Go. But I might be going to Memphis soon. Hmm, do I see Memphis in my future? Stay tuned. Because I'm putting the first card out there, world. And if y'all don't know, I have business cards. You better check my show that I uh, previously had before I had the current business cards that I have now. And I'm going to give a scavenger hunt. I have these individual cards, which is seven of them. I have a mark. And uh, whoever finds them get a hundred dollars and a chance to get on my show, cause I'll come to see you. So I'm doing my part. I don't know what y'all doing. Y'all fall asleep. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't making this exciting. Come on, I thought this was YouTube. I thought this was social media. I thought we were supposed to make fun on here. So now I'm about to start the fun. Now. Well, Mr. Sam Play Four Man, when you gonna go to Memphis and do this? Hold on, slow down. I'm going to Memphis next month. Okay? Next month, I'll be in Memphis. I will let you know when I go to Memphis. And then, happy hunting. I won't tell you what store it is. But it will be in Memphis, Tennessee. So I advise you all, and I'm even going to buy some more newer business cards so I can hide it in, so I can have enough to spread around. But I'm going to tell you like this, you find that golden card. What does it look like, Mr. Sam 44 Man? You got to look about two or three shows, two or three shows. Just check me out, my last, check out my last seven shows. You'll, you'll see, 